If you're interested in cruising the Caribbean, I'm going to share with you the five best and the five worst things about a Caribbean cruise. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge and this is another of my tips for travellers. One of the best things about cruising the Caribbean is there are three different main itineraries. So even if you've been on a Caribbean cruise before, there is another one and another alternative that you can go on. Broadly speaking, there is the Eastern Caribbean, the Western Caribbean and Southern Caribbean cruises. So the Eastern Caribbean covers normally places like the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands, Haiti, Dominican Republic, the US and British Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and Dutch St. Martin. Now if you go on a Western Caribbean, some of the places you could go to include Jamaica, the Cayman Islands is usually included, Mexico, so Cozumel and Costa Maya, sometimes Belize, the Honduran island of Roatan. Also increasingly you'll find that Cuba is so Havana and Santiago de Cuba are often now included in those itineraries as well. The other development is increasingly there are cruises which only go to Cuba. So you can often do seven night cruises out of Miami which only go to Cuba. The Southern Caribbean goes to places like St. Kitts, Antigua, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Dominica, St. Lucia, Barbados, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Most of the cruises to the Caribbean tend to be seven night cruises. Another great thing about the Caribbean cruise is choice. So you have the choice of itineraries, but you also have an enormous choice of cruise lines and style of ship to go on. There's up to 24 different cruise lines that actually visit the Caribbean in some form or fashion during the course of the year. So whether you want big ships, small ships, sailing ships, whatever type of cruise experience you want, whatever price bracket you're looking for, you're probably going to find that going to the Caribbean. So if you want a party atmosphere ship, you've got that. If you want a more enrichment type ship, you've got that. Any type of experience you can find. So very importantly, of course, think about the type of experience you want to see the Caribbean. Don't see all Caribbean cruises as the same. Think about the type of experience you want because there is plenty of choice and options. Another great thing is it's very easy to get to. So most of the Caribbean cruises actually head out of Florida. So you go out of Miami, which is the biggest cruise port in the world. The two next biggest cruise ports in the world are in Fort Lauderdale, so Port Everglades, and then you also have Port Canaveral. Of course, you can go from any other ports, both within Florida and more widespread, but it's very, very easy to get to. So for example, from Florida, a seven day cruise, you'll normally have perhaps one sea day getting to the islands. You'll see four islands, maybe five islands, and one sea day coming back. So you'll normally have a good long day in the port, you know, getting there seven, eight o'clock in the morning, and normally there until early evening. Now, of course, the best thing about the Caribbean is the weather, the beaches, and the outdoors. For a very large part of the year, it's a great region to cruise to. The best time of all is really between December and April. December can be very, very busy because of course it's the holiday period. April again can also be very busy and spring break time. Very importantly, the rainy season runs from May to December. Of course, very, very important of all is the hurricane season. The hurricane season officially runs from June to the beginning of November. Although historically, most hurricanes happen between August and October. The absolute best time to go, in my personal opinion, is if you can, early December because the weather's fantastic and it's before the big crowds. I also like the February into March time because again, the weather's pretty good. It's not massively hot. The prices tend to be really good and it's not a manically busy time. If you go to the Caribbean in the run up to Christmas, in April when it's spring break, and of course during the summer, it tends to be very busy. It's much more rowdy and it's much more raucous because that's the big holiday time. One of the great things about Cruising the Caribbean is all of the islands use the US dollar. So wherever you go, you only have to take one currency and it's accepted wherever you go. It also means, of course, if you're familiar with the US dollar, you know whether things are good value or good prices. One of the best things about a Caribbean cruise is you're visiting loads of different countries, but you don't have to keep passing through immigration. You don't have to worry about visas. Once you're cleared, once you've boarded the ship and they've checked your passport and they've got you on board, when you arrive in a port, you get off as soon as the ship's cleared and you head off into town and you head back and you don't have to worry about any of that hassle. So those are my view are the best things about cruising the Caribbean. So what do I think are the worst things about going on a Caribbean cruise? Probably the worst thing of all of a Caribbean cruise is the crowds and how busy it is. As I mentioned, there's lots of choice, lots of options, and there are so many people and so many cruise ships going to the Caribbean. 
So you'll find when you arrive in a port there can often be four or five or even more ships which means there could be 12,000, 15,000, 17,000 people heading off into the town, going on the excursions, heading to the beaches. So it, get, it gets really, really busy and a little bit manic. So that side is probably the worst thing of all of a Caribbean cruise. As the ships get bigger and bigger there are fewer places that they can actually call on. So you'll find that many of the itineraries call it the same ports, which is why they get so busy. So if you're looking perhaps to have a quieter experience on some of the islands, look at more cruise lines like Azamara Club Cruises, Silver Sea, Region 7C, those kind of cruise lines which will run smaller ships and probably go to more unusual places and therefore avoid the crowds. One of the worst things about cruising the Caribbean is the reports and the news and the concern that crime is growing across the islands of the Caribbean. Now of course there's lots more people going to the Caribbean, there's many more people heading there and the islands and the people in the islands are relatively poor. So you've got all these people arriving that are perceived as being much more wealthy and of course like in all major places where there's lots of people there is a risk of crime. So the same is true whether you're in Venice or you're in Rome or wherever on a cruise there. What's interesting to note is that many of the governments are in big countries like the United States, Canada, the UK have started to put out more information specifically for people going cruising and specifically about the Caribbean. Now in terms of the islands where crime has been reported as more of an issue in recent times include the Bahamas, St Lucia, Jamaica, Honduras, Barbados. Now most of the crime is fairly petty, it's pickpocketing, thefts, the kind of stuff you see whenever there's lots of tourists in a place. Just bear in mind when you go to these islands, even though it feels carefree, you're on vacation, the same as any vacation spot that you travel around the world, you just need to be sensible and careful. For me, one of the worst parts of a Caribbean cruise, although it's not probably a massive issue because you can avoid it, is the obsession with shopping, particularly by the cruise line. So I've been on many cruise lines and they will have these shopping advisors that will give talks and run shopping expeditions and do all sorts of incentives and things to get you shopping. Also, when you come off the ship, you walk into a mall area which is just packed with all the same retailers, Diamond International, Tanzanite International, but there's a real obsession with shopping and one of the probably the most troubling mindsets was I've heard on a number of cruise lines, these shopping advisors talking about the number one activity on land is shopping in the Caribbean. Of course you can ignore it, you can avoid the shopping, but that sense of the real push that shopping has become a fundamental part of the Caribbean experience and actually when you get to the Caribbean you have to wade through all this shopping before you get out into the islands. Another thing for me that I put in the worst bucket is the amount of hassling you get when you're on the beach. Now this differs a little bit by island but you'll find normally when you're on a beach you are constantly harassed by different hawkers. Of course in their defense these people are trying to make a living. You've got all these people coming, people with money, and they're trying to make a living. But it can become quite troublesome. And it depends a lot which island you're on. So if you're in Jamaica, you're going to have people offering you everything from drugs through to, you know, knickknacks. On other islands, it's much more handcrafted goods. Some people might sell drinks, food. But you will generally find that when you're on an island, you and on the beach, you're likely to have lots of people trying to sell you things and depending on the island they can be more pushy than other places. One of the worst things for me about the Caribbean is how the islands are blurring into one. You'll find when you're going to cruise you'll go to four or five islands and it's quite hard to remember which island was which often afterwards, what you did in which when you're explaining to people or discussing amongst yourselves. Unlike say if you're traveling to Europe where clearly each of the countries is very very different, the islands tend to be very similar and they have created a sense where those malls and the ports when you arrive are very similar, the same shops, the excursions are all very similar so they all do the beach breaks or the ATV tours or the zip lining, catamarans, snorkeling. So it will all be very very similar, it all starts to blur into one. The islands haven't tried to make themselves very distinctive and really push the different cultures so they do tend to blur into one. I think that's a pity in many ways that the islands have become so homogeneous and so similar and they haven't really tried to make themselves very different. Of course all of them are beautiful, of course you're going to have a great time but I just think it's one of the, such a pity that they haven't created different identities and made 
you feel very different. Now some of them when you go are very memorable, but they tend to be the more western ones. So St. Martin, for example, is very different to a Barbados, but they tend to be the islands that are more developed and more commercial. Cruise of the Caribbean is fantastic, but there are great parts to it and there are more downsides to it. Would the downsides stop me cruising the Caribbean? No. Should they stop you cruising the Caribbean? No. But I think understanding the best parts of the cruise experience and probably the worst parts will help you make some judgments and decisions as you look to cruise the Caribbean and hopefully you found this interesting. If you enjoyed this I would love it if you watched many more of my Tips for Travelers videos. They're designed to help you make more of your very precious travel time and money on land, on sea and on the rivers.